After mobilization, a process described in the first video of this series, your care team will decide when you are ready to begin the stem cell collection. This is the next step in your stem cell transplant process. In this video, we will answer some frequently asked questions about the collection process. Hello, I'm John Pagel. I'm the Chief of Hematologic Malignancies and the Director of the Stem Cell Transplantation Program here at Swedish Cancer Institute. How long does the collection process take? The collection process, and we like to call that a phoresis pro process, it takes typically a few hours, and it might be repeated on more than one day. How many days we actually do the collection process or the phoresis procedure really depends on how many cells we collect each time. We're trying to reach a certain number of stem cells for each individual patient, and it can be different for each individual patient, and it all depends on how well we're doing at mobilizing those cells and getting them into the blood so we can collect those cells. So because of those factors, and it's different for every patient, this can have an effect on how many days of collection we need to do. The procedure is important to talk about. The phoresis procedure is very well tolerated, but essentially what we do is we take blood out of a patient, we run it through our phoresis machine, there's a very sophisticated mechanism to collect the cells that we want, and we put blood back into patients. So we need two spots of access to the vasculature or to the blood vessels, one where we can take blood out and one where we can put blood in. And that's a very well-tolerated process, but again, it takes a few hours each time. Is this an inpatient or outpatient procedure? So typically, this is all done as an outpatient in the clinic. There are rare instances instances where we might do this in the hospital, but in general this is done as an outpatient. It's done usually with minimal to no side effects, and people can certainly go home after the procedure. Now, we do give a lot of medication through the procedure. Sometimes it's sedating medication, so having a caregiver or someone to help you get home after the collection process is certainly reasonable and warranted. How and where is the collection catheter placed? So I mentioned, of course, that we need to take blood out, run it through the machine, and put it back in. And we need two sources of access to the blood vessels or the vasculature. And we use what we call catheters for that process. Commonly, we have a port placed into the chest. Most patients who are undergoing a transplant at our center have a subcutaneous port under the skin that we can use to introduce blood back in but we typically pull the blood out through a temporary catheter. And commonly we will put that in on the day of or the day before the procedure starts. It's a temporary catheter. It's typically placed in our instances in the neck. And then as soon as we've collected enough stem cells, we take that catheter out. What can I do during collection? So during collection, you're going to be asked to be in a bed or lying still relatively comfortable for the whole process. We try to not ask patients to get up, and we ask, actually ask patients to do a normal routine, but to be lying still for the procedure. So they can watch TV, you can read books, you can use a computer, you can certainly have friends and talk and share, but you're really isolated to that procedure during that time frame. May I eat during the collection? So you can eat during the collection, and really, again, we're asking you to do normal things, but we're going to have you lying down throughout the process. Where will I go for my collection? So our collections typically happen on the third floor in the treatment center, Swedish Cancer Institute. We do this all as an outpatient. It's very efficient. It works well. And most patients, in fact, really all patients, have no problems, and it's a well-tolerated approach. Who should I talk to if I have questions throughout the collection and transplant process? 
you will have a team, a transplant team, that will be intimately involved with your care. You can approach any of that team for help and guidance at any time. You will have contact information for the doctor, the doctors on call, how to reach the nurses, the social worker, and everybody that's intimately part of your team. There will always be access to your providers at all times through the transplant process and the recovery procedure.